Yo, what is up, guys? Welcome once again to another video on the Mirko channel. After getting it back on track, after it got hacked, etc., there's a lot of things that happen, dudes. But we are back once again here on the YouTube channel, and a lot of you guys have been requesting this um, prediction video, right? We only did, we didn't. Unfortunately, I wasn't gonna. Be, I wasn't able to actually upload my group stage prediction video because I was hacked on the second of December. And I couldn't upload until literally just yesterday. So second and third of the uh, of January, my day, my bad. Uh, second of third, second and third of January. Just no uploads at all on the channel except for the Elon Musk video that the hacker uploaded. Changed my channel name to tells Tesla Live. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's all behind us now. Whatever. I can't upload the group state prediction anymore because it's a bit too late now. But. You know, it's all, it's all good, right? Because we can now do the knockout stage prediction, which is right now. We're going to be doing it, okay? So, uh, before we get started, dude, um, remember the power rankings? There are, yeah, the power rankings I did before M4. I think for the most part, I got it pretty accurate, like um, the power rankings. I think Echo is a double S tier team still. Onik Indonesia has fallen a bit. I'll put them in the S tier right now if um, looking at the group stage performance. So this is just that, like, before we get into the video, before we get into the predictions here, I do want to give a little bit of my thoughts and my adjusted power rankings on the performances, based on the performances of the teams in the group stage, right? So I think double S tier team still Echo. I think they're still number one. Um, Falcon is number one in the S tier team. I think Onyx Esports are... I think Onyx Esports needs to be demoted down to um, just S tier for now, right? Uh, Todak and Echo too. I mean, Todok as well. They are very high up in S tier. I think they are in the same level as Falcon right now. Onyx is just right below that. This is based on the group standings, uh, the, the group performances too. And honestly, I think right now the only double S tier team is uh, Echo. But a team that comes really close, or the two teams that come really close to Echo right now, in my opinion, is Falcon and Todok, right? Uh, Todok is... Todok's popping off, man. So, uh, I mean, that's it right now for the other teams, you know. The Valley, I put them in S tier. Um, did I put them in S tier or A tier? I think I put them in S tier. Um, or A tier. I think A tier. So, the Valley, I think we might have to, like, demote them to even lower, right? They weren't able to really... They, they didn't perform really well in the group stages. And I think without further ado, let's just jump into the predictions. Those are the updated double S and S tier standings for my power rankings. Now we get onto this one, right? Oof. D okay, this is it's always going to be tough, especially especially this first match, dude. This first match is absolutely wow. I don't know, man. Cloudy, you don't know too, right? You don't know. Cloudy, Cloudy wants to join the video, man. She's super clingy. Hmm. Falcon or Onyx Esports? You know what? We'll leave that to, like, we, we'll we'll set this for the last one, right? We, we'll we'll do this last. We'll do from bottom, okay? Uh, I think right now, uh, looking at Occupy Thrones' composition, the way they've been playing, I not I don't really like the way they play. I don't really think they um, can go far in this tournament. I think their tournament run stops here with an elimination. Melvinas Gaming gets it done. I think we're not going to do scores, but I'll just say it, right? Because I'm going to have to change it, the numbers here individually every single time. I'm just going to say the score. I think Melvinas Gaming gets us, gets the, the game uh, in 2-0. 2-0, I think they beat Malvinas Gaming. I mean, I think Malvinas Gaming beats Occupy Thrones. Next on the list is... Ooh, this is also a very tough one. We're skipping it for now, all right? We'll skip it. We'll skip this for now. It's very intense. Incendio versus MDH. I was way more um, impressed by Incendio Supremacy. MDH, I am really disappointed by, you know? Because while I was at ISF, I feel like they weren't the best team, but they were definitely a team that... Um, could upset the odds, right? They took Toda all the way to the late game two in ISF. So I was just expecting more from this team, uh, from MDH. Fortunately, at M4, they didn't show up. So I'm going to have to put them as... Uh, I think they're going to lose here too. They're going to be the second team knocked out. Uh, for me, I think Incendio does this 2-0. S11 Gaming versus RSG SG is a very tough one, dude. But... My gut feeling still says RSGSG. And S11 has been have been great, right? But RSGSG got to face off in the groups against Echo, which means that they've had um, better competition in the tournament so far. And 
against Echo, it wasn't... Well, Echo was controlling for the most part, controlling the game for the most part, but RSG had some, like, really good moments too. And I think having good moments against Echo is impressive, considering how impressive Echo has been right now. Uh, RRQ, they even have a good moment up against Echo, right? So RSG, I do think they're strong, um, but they just haven't found that... Uh, the, the, the flow yet, I guess. And I think their main mistakes has been in the drafts. You know, I think the players have been really good, actually. Um, the drafts need to get better. But I think if they make that adjustment, RSG are going to cruise by through S... No, I don't think cruise by. I think it's going to be 2-1, right? RSG, SG versus S11. I'll say this is a 2-1 victory for RSG. Now, let's move on over here. Oh, this is getting really interesting, dudes. This is... Vi okay. Blacklist International versus RRQ Akira. Based on what we've seen, you know, I think uh, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I still think that Group D is the weakest group. Like, I mean, it has the, it's not, I, wanna, I don't want to say weakest, but I think Group A, Group B, Group C, it was all so competitive, right? Group D was competitive, but it, was, it wasn't competitive because they were top tier. I think it was competitive because all of the teams weren't top tier, right? All the teams were like A tiers, Okay, uh, up against Blacklist International, I'm going to have to say, you know, Blacklist, even though they've had a very shaky group stage, lost to Falcon twice, a close game against Incendio Supremacy, just barely winning it out. I do still think that, you know, this is Blacklist. This is the defending champions. They will be able to adjust and they will improve definitely from the group stage performance that they had. And they are going to move on to the next stage of the upper brackets, beating RQ Akira. In a best of five, though, I honestly think it's going to be 3-1 or 3-2. Like right here, 3-1 or even 3-2. I don't think it's going to be a 3-0, considering RQ Brazil or RQ Akira, they've had a very good group stage, right? Amazing group stage, still topping their group. But... I don't know. Looking at the team, I feel like they're still very inconsistent. Uh, drafts, the drafts for RQ Akira in the final game uh, against who was it? I forgot who they they beat. Um, let me let me think. Let me think. Oh, against Team Hawk, yeah, against Team Hawk. I was really uh, disappointed in their drafts, you know, because they've had very stellar drafts. The draft that they brought to that game against Hawk wasn't too impressed by that. But I think they're still going to be strong contenders. 3-1 Blacklist. Next up here. Oh, my God, dude. I don't know. Okay, we'll skip Todak. Uh, we'll skip Todak RQ. We'll go to Echo Team Hawk first. I'm sorry, dude. Team Hawk was very impressive. I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm actually rating them as one of the top contenders now, too. Everyone in the upper brackets has a chance to win M4. I'm just going to say that right now. But Echo in the group stage just looked unstoppable. They are looking like the best team in the tournament by a long shot right now. And I don't think Team Hawk is at that level just yet. But you guys can expect Team Hawk to pull off like a big upset here. There is a possibility of this happening. Team Hawk are known to go for these crazy cheesy picks just like Todak. And I think Team Hawk have the opportunity to do so against Echo, right? Uh, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of data, my bad, on Echo. So I think Team Hawk is going to be able to like get a few games in, maybe maybe even a three two here. They might make it close, but my feeling is either three zero or three one for Echo, just based on how they were playing and based how, on how they were drafting. I don't see any holes in their game for now. So I think it's three one or three zero. Team Hawk going to the lower brackets. Let's see. Let's move Team Hawk down below. All right. Team Hawk is going to be in loser match two. Oh, against Incendio. Interesting. 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 They're going up against Incendio. Got to adjust it so it looks better. There you go. Okay. Got it. So, Team Hawk versus Incendio. Now it's all right. We gotta we gotta go for one of these. I think the Valley Burn. We'll start with that first, guys. I'm sorry for my hair, by the way. It's like kind of messed up. The Valley Burn X Flash. Burn X Flash has had a very disappointing M4. I think they got one good game in, and that was against Falcon Esports, and then that was the whole controversy. If you guys know uh, the controversy of the the Grok Flicker uh, in the game of Burn versus Falcon. 
I do think if Burn brings their best roster in here, they are going to be able to beat the Valley, right? But Valley are going to be prepared to. Like, they're going to make adjustments right now. This is a very tough call. So for this one, I'm just going to tell you who I think is going to win. Like, because based on statistics... We can't really talk about it. I'm just going to give you my gut feeling. And I still think it's going to be the Valley, right? I think the Valley are going to make some good changes here to, work, to like their, their gameplay. But Burn can definitely take this too, right? It's not an easy game. It's a 3... It's a 2-1. It's a 2-1. I don't see this game going 2-0. If it does go 2-0, it's going to go Burn x Flash 2-0, right? If the Valley don't... Um, if the Valley don't improve from their performance in the group stage, they're going to get knocked out 2-0 by Burn X Flash. And if Burn X Flash brings their best roster, which is Shma, Chama and uh, Hesa in the gold lane, I think Burn takes this game. But if the Valley makes those adjustments, I do think they still have a chance. But if they do win this, I'm going to have to say it's 2-1. It's not going to be an easy game for them. Uh, if the Valley don't adjust, Burn, easy game for them, 2-0. Uh, next is going to be... All right, match one. Oh, okay. Toda RQ first. Oh, man. I don't know. Because Toda always counters Onik and RQ always counters Todak, right? Even Chiku has gone uh, to say that, you know, they can beat any team. They're confident going up against any team, but going up, up against RQ, they're not confident, right? Well, they, they I don't know. I don't know why. It's, it's like they're kryptonite. Despite that, though, I do still think that, like, this Todok right now, the Todok we're seeing, is the best Todok we've seen in a while, right? And when Todok is in shape, when they're in form, they're a top contender. This is going to be a controversial one for the Indonesians. I'm sorry. Obviously, I'm going to be rooting for RQ here, but I think the Todok that we're seeing right now is different. It's not the same Todok that, we've, that we usually see. Uh, where RQ just literally stomps them. This is a different Todok, and I can't wait to see them play in the knockout stages. Still don't know which roster they're using too. And that just makes it so dynamic. They can even make some um, pre-game substitutions, right, after every game. And I think Todok gets this done in 3-1, uh, in a 3-1 stat line. RQ Hoshi haven't really been too convinced, convinced in their performance. Even up against RSGSG, they were struggling. Against Occupy Thrones, they were struggling. Todok, 3-0 in the group. I mean, stats, right? Stats, bro. Uh, face value, Todok wins. Now, one of the hardest ones. Wait, before that, let's move um, RQ Hoshi to the lower brackets. There's a chance of both RQs going up against each other right here, dudes. And I think it might happen. Come on, man. Come on. Come on, Photoshop. Let me, let me just... All right, there you go. Okay, so RQ into the lower brackets. Okay, uh, next on the board, it is match one. In a best of five, Falcon have struggled in best in best of fives, right? Against Phoenix, uh, in best of threes, they were struggling. I think still though, Falcon are becoming are going to be coming in uh, the upper bracket, the first match of the upper brackets in form. But I do still think that Onyx Esports are going to get this done. Onyx Esports, they didn't have a solid performance in the group stage. I'm going to be able, I mean, I'm going to say what I what I think, right? I'm not really going to hold any opinions back. I do think Onyx Esports choked the group stage. They could have done, well, they could have gone 3-0. And their games up against the other teams too, not just against Todok, were very shaky, right? Uh, they weren't really like crazy. I think the only member on Onyx Esports that was performing on the normal level is Kyrie, right? Best of five is completely different though. In best of ones... Maybe Onyx Esports just doesn't like that. But in best of threes, you can expect Onyx Esports to be in their normal form. And I think they're going to be in their tip-top form here in the upper brackets for that best of five. Unfortunately, Falcon will be... It's such a shame that both Falcon and Onyx will... Like, one of, the, one of these teams has to go down towards the lower brackets uh, in the first match, right? I do think it's going to be 3-1 or 3-2, though. There's no way it's 3-0 unless every single member on Onyx decides to pop off. Then there's a possibility. But Naomi, Falcon, everybody, every member on Falcon can pop off too. And Falcon can definitely take that too, by the way, guys. All right? Onyx, Echo. Oh, my. It's getting harder. It's not getting easier, bros. Oh, my God. All right. What do we do now? Uh, 
We can't start up here. We're gonna start down here. We're gonna, okay, let's start down here, dudes. Let's start down here, okay? Malvinas and Akira. I think Akira takes this. Again, just based on the stats, Malvinas have still been looking very, very shaky. Meanwhile, Akira are just very solid. The only reason they're in the lower brackets is, I think, because of an unlucky um, upper bracket draft where they are facing off against... Um, we're facing off against the Blacklist, the defending champs. But I do think RQ Akira takes this. And I think they even take this 2-0. Yeah? I mean, Akira have met Malvinas before, too, in Liga Latam and everything. So I think they do have the experience up against Malvinas. They know how to play against them. Akira takes it. RQ to Valley. Unfortunately, dude, I think this is where the run stops for the Valley. Right? RQ hasn't been looking too strong. But compared to Valley's run on, in the group stage... I was just not impressed at all by the Valley, right? For RQ, I do still think they're hiding a few things. Um, like, Albert's still not on those assassin picks, even though he's an assassin player. I really hope that changes here. If that changes, I believe RQ can do it. Here, taking the game 2-0 uh, against Team Valley. Next, Cloudy. <laughs> uh, next, we're going to take a look at Team Hawk versus Incendio. Now, Incendio is a great team. But Team Hawk, I think there's going to be a bit more dynamic when it comes to best of threes here. Uh, best of ones, Incendio has a, you know, a chance to really take the game to their own hands. But Team Hawk, best of three, this is where the MPL regions are going to start shining more in the, more in the other regions. Because I think you know, having that best of three format in every single regular season game really helps them with these best of threes. And in the lower brackets, with the pressure all on them, there's still more pressure on Team Hawk. But Gary and Panda... This combination, plus Min and Mun, who's just been solid, I think they're going to like pop off here. Uh, the only weak side of the map that Incendio can really exploit, in my opinion, is Lola in the XP. Alien is the better XP laner, in my opinion. But everywhere else, I think Team Hawk has it. Uh, Rosa and Min, different play styles, but I'm going to... Rosa and Min. I'll say Min. I'll say Min because, he, uh, because of his hero pool, right? So, Incendio, knocked out here. Next, though... I think Falcon takes this, dudes. Um, looking at their performance, again, I don't think Falcon are going to lose to RSGSG. I think they're going to win in the draft, and they're going to win just executing their game plan. They're going to be able to take this game and move on forward to the next stage of the lower brackets to face off against Team Hawk. And now we... You know what? We'll do the lower brackets again before we go towards the next one. But Okay, got to blow my nose there. Just getting really st um, stuffy. But here, okay. Falcon versus Team Hawk. All right, let's start with... Oh, dude, we got an RQ Derby. Oh, my God, it's getting so hard, dudes. Hmm, it's getting so hard. You know, it's crazy that I feel like Akira have looked like the better RRQ so far in groups. It's a crazy thing to say, considering, you know, I'm Indonesian. I'm rooting for Hoshi. Akira have looked like the better um, team, the better RQ in the group stage. But honestly, again, it really depends on how Hoshi plays. If Hoshi still sticks with Albert playing Utility Jungle, I don't think they're going to win this. No. If Lemon still plays, unfortunately, I just don't think Lemon fits in this composition. Uh, Lemon's a great player. Not saying Lemon's not a good player, but for RQ Hoshi right now, their style of play fits Clay more. And Clay has just been that carry, you know, at MSC, at M3 even. Oh, no, no, no M3. At MSC, just I want to talk about MSC more because M3, he was there, but I don't feel like that was peak RRQ. Peak RRQ was MSC, and we really got to see how Clay carries the game. If they go back to that MSC performance and Albert sticks to the junglers, the actual damage-dealing junglers, I'm still going to give RRQ the win here, but it is going to be 2-1. I don't think... It's going to be 2-0. 2-1. Araki Hoshi knocks out their brothers, Araki Akira. Oof, that's a sad story, bro. Arashi's probably going to be crying after this one. <laughs> but next, it's Falcon Team Hawk. I don't know. I'm still feeling Falcon on this one, you know. I'm still feeling Falcon. Team Hawk have a lot of cheesy picks. But I think Falcon wins. Similarly to how Echo were able to beat um, Team Hawk in the upper brackets. I think Falcon's just a better team here individually. The drafts have been solid after their first game against Incendio. That's the only time I was like, what the heck are these drafts? Uh, but yeah, since then, they've really improved. 
I think it's going to be 2-1-2, two, two, though, because um, Team Hawk's really good, and Team Hawk can definitely pull an upset here. Every single game, there's upsets. That's that's how crazy M4 is. Every game can still be like... There there are upsets ready to happen, right? Oh, man. Todok Blacklist. You know, I predicted Blacklist International to lose against Todok. Uh, against, yeah, against Todok in, at ISF. That didn't happen. But I don't know why, guys. Looking at the Todok roster we have now, looking at how they've been playing, up against the Blacklist roster that's still still trying to find their place in the meta, I think Todok are the better team currently. Um, you know, currently. Blacklist, if they adjust, can beat Todok. But I'm going to have to say, this is a this is a very, very controversial... Um, this is controversial, but I think Todok. Oh my god. Onyx Echo. Dude. I just gotta go with my gut, right? I gotta go with my gut. Loser match 16. That's my, This is match 16, right? Yeah. Yeah, wait. Loser match 16. Loser match 14. This is match 14. Okay, so Blacklist actually goes up against Falcon. Oh. Wait, have, have I been doing this right? Wait, let me check this again, right? Winner match 10. Winner match 9. Wait, what? Okay, yeah. But then the ones up here I need to check. Loser match 2. Okay, we've been getting it right. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just rechecking here in case I fucked up somewhere there. So blacklist match 14. This is the... Let me just check that again. Loser match 14. Okay, yes. Blacklist is going to be here now. RQ are going to be facing off against one of those. Oh my god. No way. Echo versus Onik. Echo versus Onik. Echo versus Onik. We got to understand that here, it is a best of five, dudes. It is a best of five. Hmm. Huh. Sanford Boots. Oh my god, this is so tough. Based on groups, it's easy. All right, guys. A lot of you guys are probably be, are probably like right now saying, dude, it's Echo. What what are you even thinking about? Well, yes, if you're looking at just the group stage, yes, it's Echo all the way. If this was a best of one, I would say Echo, but it's a best of five, and Onik performs in a best of five. It's not as easy as you think. Sure, you have that data of like Echo being so dominant, 3-0, but I don't know. I think I think for the score of Todok Blacklist, it's going to be like 3-2, though. 3-2 or 3-1, no way 3-0, I think, unless Todok just pops off. Oh, my God. That would be crazy. Onyx Echo. Onyx Echo. Onyx Echo. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh! It's so tough. Jeez, man. Oh my god. This is the matchup I've been waiting for too. I don't know what my gut feeling says, dude. That's so... That's why... That, that's why it's even, it's crazy. I don't know what my gut feeling says. They're on the same level. It could go literally either way. It's a 50-50 here. Or maybe a 60-40 because Echo's group stages were better. But in the best of five, I rate Onik better. Onik Esports knocks Echo down to lower brackets, making the upper bracket finals for the first time, I think, since M2. Or since M1. No Filipinos in the upper brackets. Wow. Onik Todak in the upper brackets. The rematch and also a rematch for Blacklist Falcon and also a rematch for Echo RRQ. Oh my god. This is insane, dude. Oh my god. This is so tough. Oh my god. By the way, guys, if you don't agree with the predictions, it's fine. You guys can let me know in the comment section what you guys think is going to happen. Everything here can be wrong. Literally, 100% of this can be wrong, right? So just let me know what your predictions are and, you know, join my Discord if you guys want to discuss about, like, who you think is going to win and everything because it's just really fun to do this, right? Um, here, though, I will have to say that 
Echo takes this. I think Echo takes this. And I think it's not even going to be close, unfortunately, for our IQ. Echo are just on a no, on no... Like, Echo, Falcon, Onik, Toda. Those are the four teams I rate as, like, top, right? So, our IQ, I think this might even be a 3-0. But I think 3-0 or 3-1, Echo's going to take this. Boom, bang, bada, bing. Echo moves on. Falcon Blacklist. Fal Blacklist have never lost to the same team twice. You could kind of say that they've never lost to the same team thrice, but I think Falcon might be able to do it here again. Blacklist have definitely learned from their mistakes, but Falcon will also refine their craft. They're not going to be the same Falcon from group stages, right? And I think they will be ready for this match too. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. Holy shiz. This, this could be like, this could be all wrong. Falcon could just win against Onik and then Echo wins against, you know, and then Echo wins against, against Falcon. Falcon comes down here and Onik is here instead of Falcon. I mean, instead of uh, Echo. But again, this is my prediction. So I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> oh, jeez, dude. This is so hard. I think this is the most fun I've ever done. I've ever have. I've ever had. My bad, dude. I know. I'm tired of shit. Uh, this is the most fun I've ever had predicting um, a tournament because of how super crazy the groups were. I just don't know. And how equal the teams are right now. Let's we'll start with the upper brackets. Oh, my God. Dude. Holy shit. My gut feeling says Echo. I mean, my gut feeling says Todak. It's their counter, bro. In a best of five, though. In a best of one? That's the only thing I'm like, I'm, I'm fighting, I'm fighting, I'm clashing. The cl it's a clash in my head here. Onik Todak, Onik Todak. Todak, I think, in a best of one, destroys Onik. Nine out of ten games. But in the best of five, I think Onik wins against Todak. Six out of ten games. Mm. What do you guys think? What do you guys think right now? <laughs> I'm just asking you guys, acting like it's a live stream. I think Onik will have this similar run to Onik PH. They lose once in the group stage and they go all the way to the grand finals first. Oh my god, it's so tough, man. It's definitely going to be a 3-2. It's going to be one of the best matches ever. I'm going to call it right now. Onik Todok in the upper bracket finals, if it happens, will be one of the best matches of all time in MLBB. Todok here. Dude, oh my god. This is... I can't. I can't. I can't. I've gone too close to all the players, too. Every single player. Like I mean, I've been talking to every, like a lot of the players from every team, except for Echo, actually. Blacklist Falcon, Todok, Onik. Uh, I've been talking to all of them, right? A Valley, too. They're all nice guys. This is a prediction. Falcon Echo. There's no way. There's no way a Filipino team doesn't make it to the next stage, right? But Myanmar, this is their chance. And looking at the way they play, they can do it. But again, there's no way. There's no way Philippines... Doesn't even get to the lower bracket finals, right? Every dude, I swear to God, I've been I've been seeing this a lot. A lot of people have been commenting. Oh, Mirko just doesn't like blacklist, my dudes. I'm all good with the blacklist members. You know, I mean, me and Iolo hang out a lot. I'm cool with blacklist. It's just like right now, I gotta give you my objective opinion. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You know, blacklist have proven me wrong before in MPLPH, but right now, I just don't feel like. Oh, dude, is this is this real? Am I really considering no Filipino team in the lower bracket finals? Is this a possibility right now? It is, but how likely is it to happen? Why does my brain and my body both say Falcon? No Filipino team. In the lower bracket finals in the top three of M4. The biggest, well, the craziest prediction I've ever made. I'll I'll give you guys that, right? You can say whatever you want in the comment section. I'll give you I'll give you that. This is the craziest prediction. I can't even believe it. I didn't even notice it up until here, right? 
Blacklist was knocked out by Falcon, in my prediction here. I think Echo will get knocked out too. What do you think, Cloudy? Do you agree? Do you agree, Cloudy? You do? You don't? I don't know what she's saying, man. She has the Blacklist colors. Look, she's the Blacklist colors. She got the company colors for Blacklist, dude. So I, th I think she's mad at me. I'm sorry. Yeah? <laughs> oh, Todok Falcon. Cloudy's colors are more similar to Todok than they are to Falcon. Boom. Mm, Falcon, 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 Todok, Falcon, Todok. They've met before. They've actually met before. And Falcon won. Falcon won against Todok in, at MSC. And that was a weaker version of Falcon. But that was also a weaker version of Todok. Now it's a stronger version of Falcon and a stronger version of Todok. Oh my god, dude. This is so tough. Jeez, my god. Todok win here. Does Falcon make like a super crazy run to get to the finals? The, the gods are with Falcon. After that Naomi game with the Franco, I think the gods are with Falcon. And I think Falcon will be Todok. And will meet Onik in the grand finals. It's going to be 3-2. And it's going to be another crazy game. One of the best games ever. I hope I get to cast this. Oh my god. Goodness. Best of seven. Onyx Falcon. Oh my god, it's so tough. Holy sh man. Hmm. This could have gone so different. Falcon, Onik, Falcon, Onik, Falcon, Onik. It's another 50 50. It's another Onik echo, dude. Oh my god. There's no way they do this, right? This would be the literally the greatest run ever at a world championship. Lower bracket all the way and winning. But this will also be the greatest run in the upper brackets. We've usually seen this much before. And knowing how like patterns have just been destroyed in 2022 every single time, I think the pattern is going to be destroyed here too. Winners from M1, M2, and M3 have all come through the lower brackets. I think it will be the upper bracket final victor. I mean, the, the, it's going to be through the upper brackets now. Your champions for the M4 World Championship. Got the wrong t I got the wrong thing. Is okay. My girlfriend calls right on cue, dude. I think Onik wins M4. Oh my god. Jeez, ah, dude. I'm gonna get a lot of hate. But it's fine. Tell me what you think in the comment section. To all the haters, thank you. Uh if you don't agree with my my prediction here. You know, leave a like, <laughs> leave a like to show me that you don't agree. And also, obviously, comment down below what you think. Join my Discord in the description below to, you know, just discuss about these things because we have a we have discussions over this in, um, in all my Discord. So go ahead, check it out. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys don't hate me. It's just a prediction. Everything can be wrong. And we'll see.